scripture reading this morning is from the book of Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. And when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord has need of it, and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found the colt tied at the door open in the open street, and they untied it. And those who stood there said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments on it, and he sat upon it. And many spread their garments on the road, and others spread the leafy branches which they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed cried out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is coming. Hosanna in the highest. And he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Thank you so much, Janice. I want to start this morning by talk, asking the question, has anybody ever gotten caught up in a fad? Pet rocks, disco, I got a few I want to kind of talk about in detail this morning. Anybody have a cabbage patch kid now? My wife does, my sister does. Remember when it first came out in the early 1980s? How they got so immensely popular so quickly you couldn't find them and everybody we were obsessed with them for like several months i got a funny story about that to tell you my hometown of waterbury connecticut somebody somewhere started a rumor that at a certain day at a certain time and i think it was the uh, parking lot of the caldor's department store in waterbury yeah. and the antique b17 bomber plane was going to fly overhead and drop boxes of Cabbage Patch Kid dolls on parachutes onto the parking lot. And a whole bunch of people showed up. And boy, were people mad when there wasn't Operation Cabbage Patch drop. I still laugh about that story all these years later. How about leisure suits? They originally were popular in the 1930s, the 1950s, kind of like the, the California casual. Uh, a man's outfit where you didn't have to wear a tie, a lighter material, lighter fabric, but it still looked good for like going to the office or going to dinner or even church on Sunday morning. Then they kind of went out, but then they came back briefly in the 70s. In all 1970, polyester bell bottom wore it. And they were the new big thing. Same idea. Don't need a tie, just wear the collar on the outside of the shirt. You looked dressy enough to go out, but you weren't overdressed and you were comfortable. And if you needed to, you throw a tie on and it still worked. Unfortunately, did it last? Though they say that uh, if you keep clothes long enough, then eventually you come back into style. So check your closets or be vintage gold way in the back. But sometimes fads are dangerous. Remember the uh, Tide pod, the, uh, Tide laundry detergent pod challenge a few years ago? Where uh, kids would uh, put this laundry pod in, you know, you had the, the detergent, the fabric softener, and the stain remover, and a little convenient thing, you toss it in the, in the washing machine, no mess. Kids were putting them in their mouths and seeing how long they could hold them in their mouths before they burst. Kids were swallowing the contents, and they were getting sick, and we lost a bunch. And they were egging each other on, on uh, videos on, on, on YouTube. It was a fad. And it was dangerous. And it was awful. And I'm so thankful it's gone. But a fad is anything that 
comes into style, gets really popular, and then doesn't have a long-term following afterwards, so it kind of goes away. Sometimes it happens with toys, sometimes with fashion styles, sometimes it's dangerous, but they don't last. Now I think about fads, and I get, every so often around this time of year I think about this, and I admit, it, 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 it hurts my heart to think about it. Was Jesus a fad to people during his time, during his ministry, at least to a good chunk of them? Think about our scripture lesson this morning. Jesus is entering Jerusalem for what will be his final trip to the town, the week of his passion and death. His resurrection isn't quite on the horizon yet, but he's entering town. He is at his most popular ever. But he does still make it a point. He rides a donkey instead of a horse. A triumphant king or general would often ride into a city on horseback, the big hero. Does so in a donkey, a pole. People are so excited about it, they treat him like he's the triumphant king general entering. They lay palm branches on the ground and their coats on the ground, so not even the foot of his horse would touch bare dirt or stone. That's the treatment that a triumphant king gets. That's why we have palms and wave palms on Palm Sunday to this day. It's a reminder of the welcoming of Jesus as the ultimate triumphant king. The refreshing rain. Greener than these, pliable, flexible, freshly cut off the trees. Five days later, picture those same palm branches still lying on the side of the road, now dried out and parched in the hot, dusty sun. The same way these will dry out in time as well. Crowds are once again gathered to see Jesus go by, but this time he's not riding in triumph. This time he's leaving, dragging a cross behind them under a death sentence. And the crowds aren't screaming, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord this time. They're shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! Wow! How did Jesus go from rock star to condemned in just a few days? We know the legal, you know, we know the legal conspiracy reason why, but why in popular culture? Why weren't those same people cheering him on, writing that he was about to die? Why were they cheering crucify instead of saving? What happened? Was Jesus just another fad to those people gathered there that day? Heartbreaking. But how often in life do we look at the classic, strong, meaningful things and just kind of forget about them? How easy is it to take the most basic and important things that we try to build our lives upon and just kind of let them drift into the background because we get focused on other things? During these times, it's especially easy to do so. We're just focused on our survival and have been for a year now. But it's easy to forget about the other stuff, too. So what do we do? Well, what's the difference between something that's a fad and something that's classic or something that's dependable long term, something that we just don't look at for a few months for fun and then kind of forget about, but something that we will build a life upon, we'll build a life philosophy on, upon, that we will think so important to us that there are things that we look at when we're selecting a lifetime companion, or things that we want to teach our children about and instill upon them growing up, or principles that we guide our grandchildren, or that we use to make decisions about where are we going to work, what work are we going to do, what's ethical and moral to us. The fads come and go, but the classical things stay. They last. They never go. Nice example. Anybody uh, remember around the time the Cabbage Patch Kids there was, a, there was an awful, awful famine going on in Ethiopia and in Africa, and uh, the Western nations were trying to do a lot for famine relief. You had a group of musicians in the United States and a group of musicians in uh, England both decided to record songs as fundraisers. 
The ones in uh, England recorded a song called uh, Let Them Know It's Christmas Time. It's all the popular British music artists of the early 1980s. They recorded a Christmas song. Then you had all the popular American artists record a song called We Are the World. Anybody remember it? I do. I remembered thinking how great it was when it came out. And I remember hearing it. And I kept hearing it. And I kept hearing it. For like six months, nonstop, it was the only song being played on the radio constantly. And while that was fun for a while, after a while, it got tired of it. And it would raise like over $100 million, which in the 1980s was a lot more money than it sounds like today. You know, $100 million to any of us would be like, whoa. But then it just kind of went away. Maybe once in a great while you hear it on a radio, usually in a shorter edited version, three minutes versus the six and a half that it was. 40, it's almost 40 years ago now since that was reported. Let them know it's Christmas time. You heard it for a little bit around Christmas and then you didn't hear it for almost a full year, but then it came back. And then it came back. And every year around Christmas time, you still hear this song. Almost 40 years later. Let them know it's Christmas time became a classic. We are the world, sadly, it was kind of a fad. And while we still enjoy when we hear it now, we go, okay, that was fun. But we hear them know it's Christmas time. It's still a timely message for that time of year, every year. It became something that reminds us that even though we're celebrating Christmas, there's still people in the world suffering and going hungry. Some right in our own communities. And maybe we should do something about them and let them know that it's supposed to be the most joyful time of year. And maybe help it to make it that way for them. The difference between Fad and classic. Jesus Christ is as classic as classics yet. His teachings have stood the time for over 2,000 years and counting. He continues to change the world to this day. If we want to help Jesus continue to change the world, we need to continue to listen. Maybe part of it is, is rather than just focusing on the celebration, the reflection a few days a year. Make it part of our daily lives. Let the message that transformed the world continue to transform us. Make what we do with Jesus as much of a part of our lives as, you know how I talked about uh, leisure suits earlier, and in the 60s they had narrow jackets, and they had to like baggies in the 1990s. I don't really think much about those anymore, but what does just about every one of us have in our wardrobe. Jeans. Who here has at least one pair of jeans in their wardrobe? Most all of us. The tone and colors might change a bit, you know, the style of the cut might change a bit, but they've been wearing jeans for hundreds of years. And they're still just as popular as ever. One of the few pieces of clothing that you can wear with a suit coat and a tie, and also wear with a t-shirt. One of the few items of clothes that you can wear to work out in the yard, but also wear to church. Yes, I have more jeans to church. And I'm not sore. <laughs> Don't have them on today, but anyway. Think about it now. So versatile. So useful. So helpful. Such a part of our lives that if we didn't have jeans anymore, we'd miss them, wouldn't we? Oh boy, I wouldn't miss them. That's what Pastor Bill's putting on when he gets home from church and changes out of his suit. Jeans and a t-shirt. Such a part of my life that it'd feel really weird if I didn't have them. Think about Jesus and when he teaches us that way too. When he asks us. We make him that much a part of our lives that it would be weird that he's not a part of. He's as much a part of our day-to-day -day living as our jeans might be. We're going to find that there's an incredible layer of richness and enlightenment and love in what we do and how we interact with each other. So I think my message from Palm Sunday is we uh, wave these, that feeling of triumph, that feel of celebration, that utter and complete joy that Christ brought upon that crowd so long ago. Hold on to that. You may find that it becomes just as it is.
indispensable to our lives is our genes. May God bless us all as we now celebrate and continue to reflect this week. Thank you all for being here today. Like I said, we began a, uh, a journey of uh, reflection that will end uh, next week with the celebration of Jesus' resurrection. But you know what? The reflection doesn't have to end. So as we go forward into this week, as we consider the passion of Jesus that we remember on Monday, Thursday, Good Friday. As we consider the stillness and the darkness of the tomb on Holy Saturday. And as we discover and remember Easter Sunday that it was empty. And that same Jesus that transformed the world then, transformed us all now. May God be with you all until we meet again. Amen.